With the release of Diablo 2's patch 2.5 and the introduction of Sundered Charms in Season 2, there's been a lot of talk of different builds that use this mechanic, with most of it focusing on the easily exploited Cold Mastery, and various high-end equipment sets being the counter-argument to it. So today we're going to take a break from that argument and actually cover an often requested build, the Necromancer Summoner, one of the few builds left that still gets a lot of worthwhile mileage out of the new charm. Now, before there's a panic over it, the Necromancer is nowhere near as extreme as the Sorceress since his reductions are limited, and there aren't any items we can stack on them to snowball them to extremes. This summoner is further aided by being one of the few classes able to farm any area in the game on any player count, albeit slower than many of the truly overtuned S-tier builds. So before we dive in, let's talk about what Sundered Charm this build will want to settle on and why, and it usually comes down to two options for the summoner, physical or fire, and the change to lower resist makes this an easier one for some, but even more than before. The best answer was physical, always. This is due to two reasons, one being that your strongest minions are going to be physical damage, and yes, they do benefit from Sundered. The other reason being, in the overwhelming majority of situations now, amplified damage will do more for corpse explosion as well than lower resist ever will, due to lower resist having a 70% cap. This is even before the 1 5th reduction. So with that, we focus on physical damage, which is generally the strategy for Necromancer throughout all the difficulties, as early as normal difficulties difficulty with the general strategy being a focus on getting as many skeletons as possible in addition to your basic support skills, though you will want to grab a short list of very specific ones as early as possible, with Clay Golem and its mastery in the summon tree, and whenever you get there, summon resist is nice as well, as well as amplify damage and Iron Maiden in the curses tree, and of course, corpse explosion from the poison and bone tree. With these 1.1 wonders, you will have the tools needed to progress through all of normal, with your skeleton serving as the tools for dealing with most of the threats, but Clay Golem and Iron Maiden being your primary tools for dealing with act bosses such as Duriel and Diablo, and to a lesser extent Bale. This is due to how the damage mechanics work, allowing these enemies to deal far more physical damage to your summons, and in turn receive far more back from Iron Maiden and one point is enough to facilitate this with mana potions and resummons. The reason you don't use this technique solely with skeletons is that they are far more difficult to resummon since they require corpses, and in normal difficulty they will not have the durability to stand up to these bosses. And as far as items go in normal difficulty, there isn't much you really need to aim for item-wise outside of the usual starter rune words, things like stealth armor and the lore helmet. Plus skills are nice, but most often the best idea is just to go with basic survival gear and the best weapon you can find, so resists and such are your priority, not much else will really help. And since you're not going poison and bone, there's not even really a reason to hunt down a base for white wand either, since it doesn't help much. That said, as you move into Nightmare, you'll find that you'll start rounding out your summons, getting maxed out race skeleton as well as skeleton mastery. You may want to consider picking up Decrepify and Revives here as well, though those are much more personal taste as to whether you're going to actually use them through the difficulty. The bigger change in Nightmare, though, is going to be that this is where you start looking for actual useful items. At the beginning of Nightmare, it will be things like a broadsword to make spirit in, since this is the earliest you can guarantee a four socket drop sort of thing. Crystal Sword is another option, but it's really easy to accidentally get too high of an item level and end up with six socket sword from the quest if you use Larzic on it, but you can actually find the four socket drop naturally in Nightmare. Now, if you take it to Larzac himself, you can get broadswords and crystal swords from normal difficulty cows, but it's pretty much better to just keep going forward and growing your character. In terms of other gear, this is where we start looking at a bit more difficult to find, but still budget items. Four socket pole arms for insight for our mercenary, if you're lucky a good two socket head with plus summon skills for splendor, or later on homunculus is actually pretty reasonable to find in nightmare as well, and any other of unique wands can be a competitive thing with spirit as well, with most popular one being arm of Leoric. though generally you're again mostly looking for plus skills and resist since everything else is just extra and should be relatively easy to take or leave. The only other big things to get in Nightmare are first, to spend a little while shopping a teleport staff from Drognan in Act 2 once you get a good map with him near the exit to town. This staff will be super useful for dealing with bosses since it lets you telestomp on them since you don't have Enigma yet, it also helps with navigating things like Maggot Lair. The other useful thing you can find in Nightmare are plus skill charms since they are able to be found from mid-Act 3 onward, and while you probably won't find 
find one, picking up grand charms from this point on becomes far more important and far more useful. As far as mercenary choice, since Nightmare is whenever you might actually want to start concerning yourself with it, I personally prefer using the Act 2 Thorns mercenary for general progress, even after the change. It's potent enough to still help with the Act bosses and allows you the freedom to use Amplify Damage to help it along. Generally, I only bother using the more popular Might mercenary for post-game farming, since you no longer have a reason to seek the advantage against Act bosses. It is possible to use an Act 1 Fire Bow mercenary with Insight as well early on, but you do give up a lot of punch to do so. Into Hell is whenever we start seeing the levels needed for Sundered Charm, since they require level 75 to use. And by this point, you should have your three core skills maxed out and a point in all of your optionals, with the core skills being Corpse Explosion, Skeleton Mastery, and Ray Skeleton. Beyond this, it becomes a question of what form of hybrid you want to work into your summons. Are you going to go pure summons, in which case you want Golem Mastery? Are you going for a melee commander? You'd actually want bone armor and its synergies for tanking. For now, I would avoid poison as a secondary until they fix the bug, though it can work as a primary like we'll cover in another video. Throughout Hell and beyond, you'll start working on your chase items. Of course, Enigma, a Monarch for Spirit Shield, Shaco if you're lucky for a helmet, which is Harlequin Crest, a good plus skills amulet if you don't already have one, etc. Peak items for this build are almost entirely around plus skills. Arm of King Leoric for summoning, as mentioned earlier, Homunculus is a solid go-to if you don't want to dump strength for a spirit, etc. More budget items like the Bone Rune Word can be used as a good holdover until you get Enigma as well for plus skills and resists, which are both highly desirable. Since I rarely need the life boost from Call to Arms, I tend to prefer having Leoric and his skill shield on swap, and actually go around with Beast for fanaticism once I can afford it. It's usually the last thing I get though, but I do stack it with the Mercenary's Aura of Might, and as soon as you can get it, Infinity can actually turn your summons from being mostly meat walls that hit about 50% of the time into regular damage dealers to help get those first kills for Corpse Explosion even without needing to Telestomp. Now, Infinity is higher pri priority than Beast so do keep that in mind whenever you're doing your trading and such. These chase items are especially true after you've gotten past beating all of the bosses, which I would still keep on thorns and amplify damage for if you haven't beaten the game. Only switching to Might for more unique and swarm farming until you get Infinity. An Act 1 mercenary using Inner Sight can help your minions hit more as well, but it's mostly a stopgap because you are sacrificing per hit damage for hitting more often. The summoner is a powerful tool and super reliable as a hardcore build as well since you have a massive wall of minions to guard you. The only really dangerous enemies are those that deal area of effect damage like elemental enchanted uniques, which is easy enough to deal with by moving away from them and keeping resists up. After that it only leaves ranged enemies which only a few have pierced to hit you, so watch out for gloams and the throwing cats and you'll usually be fine. By going physical you help all of this and you ensure that enemies will sit at negative 5% physical resistance at the most, after you get your Sunder Charm up and running with Amplified Damage of course, where Fire would sit at 25% but usually higher unless you have somehow packed 40 plus all skills on you by some weird miracle. And since physical is not super desirable on the Sunder front, they will innately be much cheaper than the more competitive options of Cold and Lightning, and probably even cheaper than the Fire since that has a few classes that can use it as well. Well with the right gear. This tendency to ignore the summoner's potency generally makes this one of the better affordable A tier builds in the game with the exception of Enigma, which isn't an extremely high priority since you do still have access to teleport through the staves and at least on the easy end, as well as amulets and circlets on the more hard to find end, though they can get annoying to repair every few runs and are best reserved for stomps rather than just bouncing around the map. Now if you want to get into more details on how skeleton damage is calculated and deep dive deep details on the rest of the summons, check out the video on screen now, and as always a special thanks to the regular viewers, patrons, and channel members that make this content possible.